I was recently contacted by a company called One Leaf AI based in Hong Kong. They asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing their digital day night scope, the Commander NV400. They offered to send me one of their scopes to use and then review, and after I'd reviewed it, the scope was mine to do with as I wished. The scope has been reviewed many times on various YouTube channels, and I watched most of the reviews. But for what I do, and how I do it, an infrared scope that can see in the dark, but does not have a ballistic calculator, is of no use to me. So why did I agree to review their scope? Because One Leaf have recently added a ballistic calculator to their Commander NV400 scope. And that, in my opinion, is a game changer. I'll put in the usual disclaimer here. I'm not affiliated to One Leaf in any way. And whatever I think and say about their scope is entirely my own findings and my own words. I'm reviewing the scope in the context of what I do, which is pest control with air rifles at relatively close distances. By the end of this review, you'll know my thoughts on the scope and what I intend to do with it after I've reviewed it. A week or so after agreeing to review their scope, a package arrived from Hong Kong. I don't do unboxing videos. But here's the fastest unboxing video you'll ever see. And that's what you get in the box. So you get all the batteries you need and a micro SD card, all included in the box. And Samsung and Kingston are both very reputable brands, so they're not sending you junk. There's a very detailed and easy to understand instruction manual in the box, but the ballistic calculator has only recently been added and it's so new, it's not covered in this version of the user manual. There is, however, a digital user manual that you can download it from the internet, which is a digital version of the old user manual, plus a very detailed section on how to set up a ballistic calculator. The ballistic calculator and all of its software is housed in the scope, which means you don't have to download any apps or connect to any devices or upload or download anything. All of the information about the parameters that you need to enter, you input directly into the scope. And the scope itself does all the calculations. These are the instructions for zeroing the six different reticle profiles. I think it's worth mentioning here that I've used a few different zeroing systems, including some of the big names in digital and thermal. And this system is by far the easiest that I've used. The scope comes with a decent quality set of 30 more rings that are quick detachable for a Picatinny rail. I thought the one leaf logo and the rings was a nice touch. The mounting system is unconventional, but if you are mounting it onto a full length pick rail, then it works just fine. I think it's worth mentioning that there's not a lot of real estate on the tube, so moving the scope backwards and forwards in the rings to get your correct eye relief is not an option. But again, if you're mounting it onto a full-length pick rail, it's not a problem. The first rifle I mounted the scope onto was an FX Wildcat Mark III. And this rifle has a full-length pick rail. So the unconventional mounts and getting the correct eye relief was not a problem. A few weeks later, I wanted to mount the scope on a different rifle, which was a little more tricky. This rifle has dovetails, so I fitted a little pick rail adapters, which only have one slot each. I ended up eventually having to change to more conventional mounts for a more secure attachment. For anyone wanting to mount any scope to any air rifle with their modest velocities and curved trajectories, I'd strongly recommend getting height adjustable mounts. They really make life and zeroing much easier and you can keep the reticle zeroed in the center of the scope which is where your scope works best. In this review, I'm not going to show you what each button does or teach you how to use a scope. There are other YouTube reviews that do that extremely well and they go into great depth on what pushing each button does. What I do want to show you is how well the scope actually performs and very specifically to test the ballistic calculator and see if it's any good. The Commander NV400 can record video footage in five different resolutions. They recommend using 4K 30 frames per second for nighttime recording and 4K 120 frames per second for daytime recording. This is Yoda and Wilbur, the Easter Bunny. 
They volunteered to help us check the picture quality of the different video recording resolutions in the NV400. Yoda is about as tall as a rabbit sitting in a paddock. And if you are contemplating a headshot, Wilbur's face is about the size of a rabbit's brain. I put Yoda and Wilbur out at 30 yards, and I specifically put them in the shade because I want to see how the camera deals with the difference in light and dark. And I'll quickly just run through the five different resolutions. To be honest, I can't see much of a difference. I then moved them back to 75 yards and filmed them at 1 times magnification and 13 times magnification. I'm pretty impressed with the clarity. The scope has a separate standalone 8 watt, 850 nanometer infrared illuminator. It has three power levels and can be adjusted from a wide beam down to a focused spotlight. There's pros and cons to the illuminator being separate from the scope. The pros are that during the day you can take it off, so you're not carrying the extra weight. Another one is that being a separate unit, it has its own battery, which is an 18650. So it's not using up the scope's battery. I like 18650s because all of my other battery operated equipment also uses 18650s. So I've always got a few with me. The downside of a separate illuminator is that every time you reattach it, you need to realign the beam with where the scope is looking. An 850 nanometer wavelength light is visible to the human eye and also to animals. Nighttime performance. I believe this scope would make an excellent ratting scope. Its close range nighttime image quality is great. It can focus as close as 5 yards, which is very nice. If you consider that Wilbur, lying on its side, is the same size and shape as a rat, this scope would be perfect for nighttime ratting. At 27 yards, perfectly usable. At 5 times magnification, perfect. At 45 yards, still nice and clear. At 75 yards, you can still identify a rabbit size object. It starts to get a little bit grainy at 5 times magnification, and that's about the limit of where I would use it. With a little bit of eye shine, it would be perfectly usable. There are two main differences between what you see through the scope and what gets recorded on the video. The first difference is, when I'm ranging the target, the distance shows up in the middle of the scope screen. In the recorded video, the distance shows up in the top right corner of the screen. The second difference is the holdover point of aim that the ballistic calculator generates appears on the reticle in the scope and it looks like this but it does not appear in the recorded videos. I suspect one leaf will change that in the future. The next step was to get the rifle zeroed and then to test the ballistic calculator. I zeroed it at 35 yards and as I've said, the zeroing process is very easy and straightforward. Unfortunately, you can't record video while you're zeroing. You can only record video while you're shooting. These were my final three shots of zeroing at 35 yards. When zeroing, I found that a one-shot zero is often more of a waste of time than actually saving time. Shoot three shots and then zero to the center of the group. The next step was to check the ballistic calculator at close range and to tweak if necessary. I like to check it at about half of my zero distance, so I chose 16 yards. Check out my video on how to tweak a ballistic calculator if you're not sure on how to do that. The ballistic calculator has generated a holdover point, which you can't see, but it looks like this. And I'm holding it over the center of the circle here. Point of impact was here, so it's shooting low at 16 yards. To correct this, I went into the ballistic calculator menu and I increased the scope height from 2.2 inches to 2.6 inches. This causes the ballistic calculator to generate a lower point of aim, effectively raising the point of impact. I'm now holding over here, and the point of impact is now dead on 
or as close as I care to get it at 16 yards. So our upfill is now zeroed at 35 yards and the ballistic calculator is covering everything from about 10 yards out to 35 yards. The next step is to check the ballistic calculator out at longer distances. I like to check it at least double my zero distance, so I've moved the target back to 70 yards. I will be aiming for this black dot. The ballistic calculator has generated a holdover point here. You can't see it, but I can see it in the scope. The ballistic calculator's generated point of aim was not far off at 70 yards, it was slightly high. To tweak this, I went into the ballistic calculator menu and slightly adjusted the ballistic coefficient of the pellet. This tells the computer that the pellet is going faster than it actually is and the computer generates a slightly higher point of aim. I'm not worried about left or right variation, that could be the wind or it could be me and can be easily corrected by zeroing the reticle. All I'm concerned with here is the vertical movement up and down and I'm happy with that at 70 yards. Warning! This is about to become a pest control video. So if you find pest control disturbing, please stop watching now. For the remainder of this video, please just keep in mind that you can't see the ballistic calculator's generated holdover point. But for every shot, I range it first, I get the holdover point, then I take the shot. This rifle was zeroed at 30 yards and I'm taking headshots at 59 and 62 yards with no problem. I must mention here that only when reviewing the video clips that you've just watched did I realize I had forgotten to close the lens cap, which is why the clips were grainy. So the lesson to be learnt is, if you're videoing during the day, always use the sunshade. You'll see another clip shortly of a Pukeko, which was filmed with the sunshade on, and the difference is huge. The Wildcat is a relatively flat shooting 2.2 caliber, pushing a 16 grain pellet at 850 feet per second. I decided that to really test the ballistic calculator's capabilities, I should mount the scope onto a 25 caliber, shooting a big, heavy 25.4 grain pellet at just over 500 feet per second as a real rainbow trajectories. Using exactly the same process as before, I zeroed it at 30 yards. I then tweaked the ballistic calculator to be dead on at 7 yards, so 7 all the way to 30. I then moved the target back to 60 yards, which is double my zero. This was late in the afternoon, there's a Pukeko walking through the top of the screen that shows you what the 4K 120 frames per second resolution looks like. Aiming at the black dot. A quick tweak of the ballistic coefficient and I was happy with the holdover at 60 yards. And all that was left to do was find some bunnies and test it out as it got dark. This is 4K 30 frames per second at 68 yards. This is a 25 caliber air rifle shooting 25.4 grain pellets at 519 feet per second. Zeroed at 30 yards, you can literally see the rainbow like arc of these slow pellets. And I'm making 60 plus yard headshots in complete darkness. I think it's fair to say the scope and the ballistic calculator work very well. My thoughts on the pros and cons. There's very few cons that I can come up with. It's heavy, and it's a bit bigger than other scopes with these features. Its width makes it tight to close in a bag or a case. There's no Wi-Fi connectivity. You get a USB-C type cable that connects it directly to your computer. Are any of these deal breakers? No, not for me. I also think it's worth adding, you need only to look at some of the YouTube reviews of the scope from a year ago 
and you'll see that One Leaf is proving to be a very progressive company. The scope has evolved hugely over the last year, and it seems to just keep getting better. Under the pros, I have great picture quality, a very good ballistic calculator, easy to use controls. I absolutely love the one touch record button, 50 millimeter objective lens to let in more light. It's got a huge ocular lens. At 34 millimeters, it's going to be very easy on your eye. The manufacturer says that it's rated for Springer air rifles. It's very interesting. It's got a decent battery life. Through all my use of the scope, I've used the internal batteries. On only one occasion did I need to use the external battery. It's got a two-year warranty. And through the last six weeks of using the scope, I have not had one software problem. No freezing, no screen issues, no return to zero issues. And I can't say that about all the big name scopes that I've used before. And of course, the biggest pro is the one thing we haven't spoken about yet, the price. As of the beginning of May 2024, the Commander NV400, the exact model that I'm reviewing, is for sale on the OneLeaf.ar website for 658 US dollars. And if you use the discount code in the description below, you'll get 10% off that price. That's a lot of scope for $592. And if you do decide to buy one and you use the discount code below, I might get a few bucks to put towards my next tin of pellets. Final thoughts. It seems crazy to call the Commander NV400 an entry-level scope because it comes with many of the features you'd expect to find in a top-level scope, yet it has an entry-level price tag. The only thing weighing it down, no pun intended, is its weight. But in my opinion, that is easily outweighed by its performance and its price. If you're looking for a digital scope that has great performance during the day, and can see in the dark with infrared night vision, and a laser rangefinder, and a ballistic calculator, this one's going to fit the bull. And it's not going to break the bank. As for what I intend to do with this particular one, it's going to stay right where it is on my 25 cal. This rifle has five power settings, and I've already set up a different profile for each power setting. So I can now get the full spectrum of use from this rifle. I can shoot during the day, or in total darkness, and record all my shots, without having to change scopes. <laughs> what a winner.